Hey, good morning. Happy Thursday. Hey, a handful of things I have to talk about today, mostly around the cool zones. We had some questions yesterday about how am I supposed to stay cool when the allocators give me back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back flights? Um, do what you got to do. That's your answer. Do what you got to do to stay cool and make sure you're communicating what you got to do to the appropriate people. Um, your crew chief does need to know that you need to get cool. Um, the company understands that you have to stay cool, that you have to get cool. Do what you have to do to get cool. Um, if you're having a problem getting cool, communicate that to your crew chief. Communicate that to your shop stewards. Communicate that to me and Denise on the hotline. Communicate that to your managers, your CSMs, and your MODs. Um, there's no reason for anybody to get hurt out here because they get too hot. The company has been very supportive and very helpful in giving us the tools we need to make sure that we can stay cool. Do what you have to do to stay cool during these hot afternoons when it's, when it's hot outside and you've been outside and you're working hard in the sun. We know it's hot. Do what you have to do to stay cool. So while I'm on the subject of staying cool, N2 has uh, three cool zone coolers, and these are some of the more classic uh, porta cool coolers. They have a different interface on them. In fact, the one at Alpha 2 has no interface uh, through which to plug in the garden hose. So we have to fill these manually. Please do so on a very regular basis. If these things are getting used a lot, they are thirsty. Um, I filled the one at Alpha 11 probably six times yesterday, and the pump stops working when it gets below a certain point, and I'm not certain the one at Alpha 11 is uh, as well adjusted as I would like it to be, but until I can get a hose interface so that we can actually plug the hose in for real, we're going to have to keep manually filling these things. And if you find one that hasn't been filled up, but the pump has been left on, the pump it seems to have some sort of a thermal breaker in it or something like that. Um, the one at Alpha 11 I was having a hell of a time with yesterday. Turn the pump off for a while, get some water in it, let it cool off for a little bit, turn it back on, the pump's going to come back to life and it should be okay. And also finally on the subject of cool zones, um, the plugs for these have brand, most of them, if not all of them, have brand new GFCI outlets that Denise and I worked real hard to get and they put new security boxes over the front of them, although the security boxes are not locked at this time, they may become so if we keep plugging things that are not cool zone coolers into those outlets. Please, only cool zone outlets in those, uh, uh, cool zone plugs rather, in those outlets. Um, anything else increases the electrical load on those things and they wear out so much faster. They can't handle the heat, it's hard on them and any little bit of spike in electricity will cause them to break, cause them to fail, and then we have to get them replaced, and it takes time to get them replaced. They can't be replaced instantaneously. So only cool zone coolers in those outlets, please. Last today, you noticed we put a post up the other day talking about maintaining the five-foot rule, and I just want to hit that one more time because we're going to be hitting this pretty hard the next uh, week or two or three you have to keep your equipment outside of the five foot zone. Um, I know from a compliance standpoint, which I've discussed in times past, isn't necessarily the safety committee's wheelhouse. I want to keep you safe. That said, it looks like the company might start cracking down on this if they haven't already. You must keep your equipment five feet or more away from the airplanes. Now that includes the fuselage, that includes doors, that includes engines, that includes wings. Belt loaders, lab trucks, tow bars are the only things that are allowed within five feet of an airplane. Everything else, even if it's only for a moment to pull uh, on a hypothetical, a connects rig to the forward side of a belt loader during an aft bin offload. That's precisely what we're talking about right there. It's important that we maintain that five foot, and that's for your safety. We're playing with fire if we put these tugs in a position where one thing can go wrong 
and everybody's day is ruined. And it might be something that is ruinous to your career if something terrible happens. Please, please, please pay attention to that five foot rule. It's, uh, it's, I, I can't, I can't state enough. Five feet, five feet, five feet. That's all I want to talk about today. You can get me and Denise at the hotline um, at the end of the video. Send us a text. Don't send us anything on Facebook Messenger. We're not going to get to it for a day or two or five or ten because we don't check it regularly. Get us on the hotline. Phone numbers at the end of this video. In the meantime, have a pleasant, safe Thursday. Stay cool out there. It's hot. It's nasty. I get it. Be careful. Be safe. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, everybody.